we all stand, can you just enter into worship with us today? just bow your heads just for a moment. Heavenly Father, Jordan's coming. Praise the Lord, Blackwell. Um, Ezra's got a verse he's going to read, and then I got a small testimony, and then we're going to do focus prayer. For his anger endureth but a moment in his favor. His life weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, the small testimony I had. I was uh, feeling real depressed one day. I was just going through it, and uh, Brother John had texted me, asked how I was doing, and uh, instead of just saying, oh, I'm okay, I was like, man, I'm really going through it today. I could use your prayers, and uh, he just gave me some real good words of comfort, sent me some scriptures, and then the, the next day going to work, I, I noticed I wasn't feeling that anymore, and then God gave me that scripture, and uh, just the end part of it, the... Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. But I didn't receive it like monotone like that. Like it was like my uh, my conscious, my Jiminy Cricket was a little black preacher. So I received it like Jeep, re, little, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I started speaking in tongues on the way to work. I didn't feel that depression anymore. I about to pull over, and I was just so thankful to God for that. It was just awesome. I was, and I'd, I'd been like thinking how like I, I grew up in church. I couldn't ever like remember all these scriptures I had learned in Sunday school. And it was just awesome that God gave me a scripture like that to comfort me. And I, I was just really thankful for that. So uh, now we're going to go on to, to prayer though. God, I ask you, Lord, to forgive us, Lord, for anything we've done that's not of you. Lord, I ask you to cleanse us, Jesus. Lord, make us white as snow, Lord. Lord, empty out this carnal spirit, God, and fill it with you, Jesus. Oh, we just want to let go and let God today. Lord, let go of that depression. Let go of the distraction. Let God move in this place today, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for my family, Lord. I thank you for my church family, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that I got a roof over my head, a car to drive, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, I thank you for my job, Lord. Thank you for my kids, Lord. Lord, thank you for this day together, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I worship you, God. I magnify you, Jesus. Lord, we ask you to move in this place today, Lord. Pour out your spirit over us today, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, thank you, God. Move in this place today, Lord. Let your spirit flow, Jesus, Jesus. If you have an offering, you can go ahead and bring it to the front and come up to the front and worship with us if you'd like. Are you thankful there's no one like him? Yes. There's no one like him.
into garments. He can bring life where there once was death. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The world. But he couldn't feel me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. All that you came along and you put me back together. Is now satisfied or hearing your love. Aren't you glad he got a hold of you and changed? Seasons are high. 
of that name, there are examples in this place right now that anything can happen. Anything can happen through a move of God. Anything at all. That you walk in, anything can 
Aren't you thankful to be in the house today? Anything can happen in that name. I'm so thankful for the name of Jesus. There's healing. There are examples, like I said, there are examples in this place of miracles, of great miracles that we've seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything can happen. possible with our God. Moment anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment that you see again. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment that you walk in. Worship him across this place just for a moment. Just all hands raised, eyes closed. Call out that name. Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. What a wonderful presence of God that is here today. If you need anything, He is your answer. He is your answer. Well, happy Grandparents Day. So good to see all of you. I was talking with Brother Eddie and a couple others. How did grandparents get so young? Remember, you're young, and grandparents are so old, and then you become a grandparent, and they're so young. <laughs> so when you look at your grandparents today, no, they don't feel old. You know, you feel like, I still am who I was when I was in kindergarten. I still, you know, in your head, you're still that little person. So we're not as old as we look. <laughs> later, um, Sean is getting baptized later today. If you don't remember or you don't know, Sean was in a horrible accident um, on Mother's Day. And we all pled the blood and prayed. And, and his mama was a praying mama. And um, I know he was praying. God pulled him through. He was, um, he was not, they, he was pretty much dead, wasn't he? I mean, that's what they were, and he wasn't going to make it. And he is here today, going to get baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> Pastor's been giving him Bible studies, and he is ready to get baptized. We're waiting for a few people, so it'd be at, it'd be at the end. A few more of his people are coming. But today is Grandparents' Day, and we have several things we're going to do, and then we'll go to classes. Um, but first of all, we have... So if you are reading, if you are a ch one of the poem readers, if you could come up. Is it? Okay. Your Sunday school director is going to help you there. So if you can come on up. If you don't mind just to stand in the order that you're going to read. being a little girl at church and I had to do something like this. We were all in the line and we, I read something and I was so terrified. Look at these sweet little faces, but you don't know how terrified one of them may be. So say a little prayer for them. Are you first? Awesome. Here we go. What's it called? 
grandparents. <laughs> a story time, a number nursery rhyme, the time you spend with me. Fills me up with happiness, wills, will, your, everything you to me. Our hearts are full of love and care. I think the world that you are there to always be the one for me that fills my heart with memories. Grand <laughs> grandparents, grandparents, they are the greatest people in the world. Near or far, wherever you are, always be my shining star. <laughs> a smiling face, a warm embrace, a hand to hold when I am cold, two arms that hold me oh so tight and wish good dreams to me at night. A heart so full of love and care, I think the world that you are there to always be the one for me that fills my heart with memories. Grandparents, grandparents, they are the greatest people in the world. Near or far, wherever you are, you'll always be my shining star. All right, so now if we can have all the young ones to come up, if you're in Kids Jam, if you could come up, if you belong, are in part of Kids Jam and you want to. So would Hazel and Rosie like to come up? If you can all come up. And we're just going to sing a simple happy grandparents day to you. Okay. So you can all, and look real happy because you love your grandparents, right? Okay, here we go. Happy grandparents day to you. Happy grandparents day. Ta-ta-ta. Ta-ta. <laughs> All right. We're just going to have a slideshow here just to show some of the grandparents. I'm sorry if you did not send me pictures of you and your grandchildren, but here's some of the grandparents of the church.
Ah, she's just a chip off the old block. <laughs> we have a we have a, a little appreciation dinner for all everyone after after service today, and uh, it was it was made by Sister Caitlin, and I uh, want to give her a big hand today. <laughs> Prepared and ready. It's a macaroni cheese bar. So if you have time or don't have other plans, we'd love for you just to pop back there and, and uh, eat together. And uh, man, there's just so many people around today. I, I, I'd be, a, I'm, whew, I don't know, I can't even say it. All, all the people I'm excited to see today. There's just, there's just all kinds of people. Thank you. That's awesome. And uh, we do celebrate all our grandparents today. Um, it's just it's just great uh, well i could I could start, but I know I'd forget somebody's name then I'd look really bad because <laughs> I'm really bad at names so uh, but I do thank you all for coming. We're going to dismiss classes at this time to Sunday school. I would like to bring uh, your attention to a few people. It's been working really hard. Brother Mike Evans mowing the grass. Uh, Brother uh, John, who's been doing the weed eating. Appreciate that. Let's give him a hand. Also, uh, Sister Brandy has been uh, started cleaning this week, and the uh, place looks great. Let's give Sister Brandy a hand. Let's give our drama team a hand here. Next time I have beans, I'm going to have him over. He's definitely a ham. All right. I want to keep in prayer um, Tom Weaver. He has uh, he has been put in uh, a nursing home for uh, a fracture in his in his back, and uh, they're going to re rehabilitate for that for thirty days, and then reevaluate after that. And I want you to pray for Tom Weaver. Uh, didn't know it. Tom was a uh, commander of a submarine in the Navy, and so he's uh, he's quite a quite a guy, and uh, we're thankful for Tom and Leanne being a part of our church. I want to go to Psalm sixty one one through four. Psalm sixty one one through four. If you'd stand with us to for the reading of the Word of God, let's go there today, and let's take a look. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. And I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. Praise the Lord. I like to preach to you today, strong towers. Strong towers. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have provided for us, for the strength that you have given us. We pray, Father, that you will move in this service and you will open our eyes. Let us see the truth. Let us walk in it. Let us rejoice in the salvation. And let us renew our trust in you that we would walk in victory and in peace and in love and in hope. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, strong towers. Praise the Lord.
This scripture is a, is a powerful scripture. It's one of those that, that when you're looking for an impact scripture, it's definitely one of those ones that you just really boisterously say out there. You might even say it with tears. You, you, you would say it with a smile on your face. It, it, is, it is one of those scriptures that can bridge any kind of emotion. So let's look at it just really again real quick. He says, hear my cry, O God. When he's crying out, it's not, <laughs> and that's, uh, there are times when we do stuff like that. We do break, we, we have issue, but it was more like a herald cry. It was crying out to get God's attention. It's a voice out loud. I need you, God. I need you, God. Anybody ever need the Lord? Scripture then says, attend unto my prayer. Pay attention to me, God. I'm in a deep trouble. I'm in, I'm in deep waters here. I'm in serious situation, and I need some help. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. See, now, when I get to the very edge... Anybody been to the edge lately? Yeah. The edge is sometimes a difficult place to be. When you're on the edge, sometimes you're hanging on. Sometimes you're looking over it. Sometimes you feel like you're, about, you're walking backwards towards it. And fortunately today, I, I hope no one's running for it. Because the edge is a dangerous place to be. But the edge is some place where where uh, it can be terminal, it can be the very end of it. And that was what he's saying, the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Your heart can be overwhelmed, right? It can be overwhelmed in financial situations, overwhelmed in discouragement, overwhelmed in pain. I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired. Overwhelmed in marital situations, it's just a weight on you. This love is not supposed to hurt like this. This discouragement is not supposed to be so dark in my life. My life's not supposed to be like this. That sometimes is a heart that's overwhelmed. And you can also be overwhelmed in other good ways. When you look that baby in the eyes for the first time, Oh, my lands, this is so awesome, so incredible, so sweet. But in this case, I believe he's talking about the edge. He's talking about to the end. He's talking about that situation. This is one of those times when he says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Now, remembering that the writing of this time, this is a... This is somebody who is a nomad of sense. The people that he is writing uh, and encouraging with his psalm are nomad people. They're, they're shepherds. They're people who live off the land. They're farmers. And so he is equating what he's feeling with something that is, that is very present in his life. A nature walk. A, well, we might take a, a few days. And anybody ever been to Cedar Bluff in in Monroe County? Here, it's down off of Old Thirty Seven, and it's there's a little cliff there. If you were to go to Medora, I don't remember what that's called. Steve, what's that called? That big cliff up there. Say it again. Lehigh. It's just huge place, and you would think. There isn't anything like that anywhere near Medora. It's so flat, but it's amazing. It's an amazing place, and it looks like you're in, you're in Tennessee the, with the view from it. And it's, um, the, this is what he's saying. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to that place where I have the view Lead me to the place where I am over my enemy. So he's saying, lead me to the rock. Well, we know a rock, a firm foundation, a solid place. His name is Jesus, right? 
Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When I sing that song, I'm not thinking of a view out of Medora. I'm not thinking of Cedar Bluffs. I'm thinking of Jesus, my rock, my fortress, my strong tower. So when he says, that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter. A shelter, a rock, a, 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 a cleft in the rock. Anybody ever remember the old song? Cleft in the rock. A, a place where you can get in and you're protected from the elements. A shelter. A shelter. I, I want to go into a cave where there's shelter. I want to go into a house on a, as a wayward person on the way, traveling a, and I find a, a cabin and I knock on the door and they invite me in. It's a shelter. It's a, it's a place where the animals might gather. It's a shelter. So it, for this writer, he's looking at it and he's saying, Thou hast been a shelter for me. Been a protective place for me. And he says, Thou and a strong tower from the enemy. A strong tower from the enemy. I want to focus on the strong tower today. I, 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 see, I see this fella as in the, in the walls of a city there would be a tower. And there would be a watchman on the wall. And there's, there's scripture in the Isaiah, I believe it's 40 or 41. that said, watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? And the watchman replies back. And it's, it's the watchman on the wall. And the watchman's watching. I know I've talked about this in the last few weeks. But it's still just a part of it. It's something I can't get a hold. I can't let go of. So, and a strong tower from the enemy. There, there, this writer is saying I, there's a place of, in, of strength. It's a place where armament would be. It's a place where they would climb up and be able to see on the walls and watch for the enemy. It's a strong tower. It's not too far from removed that we, we would understand that. We would understand a, a tornado shelter. or We'd understand um, a strong place. You know, when it's raining, nobody really wants to stay in a mobile home or a camper in a tornado warning right and so I remember as a child we were out at Lake Lemon and 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 the and the winds were coming and dad uh said we all got to go we got to go and and I believe it was just me and him and maybe my brother and and me and we were getting in the truck and the wind started blowing and sucking so hard that I couldn't shut the door and my dad had to reach across the truck and grab a hold of the door and shut the door. And then he made that, uh, that, that Ford truck just move through that campground. The campground was empty by then. And we, I mean, we were going faster than I ever imagined going through that campground. But we were headed to shelter. We were headed to shelter. A strong tower. A place with a good foundation a place with not just boards it, it's kind of like the story of the three pigs there's the, the straw house and the and the stick house but then there was the brick house and the brick house was strong enough to withhold the wind of the of the wolf's breath so whatever the enemy may have and puff your house isn't coming down Amen. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. In a place of safety. Oh, you can't walk away from the house of God and think that's not a place of safety. It's not. The house of God is a place of hope. The house of God is a place of victory. The house of God is a place to gather in where brothers and sisters unite in unity and peace and hope and victory and share the word of God and encourage each other. And he's saying, ah, oh, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. When he talked about the tabernacle, he was talking about a tent. When he was talking about a tabernacle, he was talking about a place where it was just out 
in, in the weather, it was made with badger skins, it had poles, it had the strength of it, but the strength of that tabernacle was not the walls, it was not the foundation, and it most certainly was not the poles. It was the presence of God. And he said, oh, I'm looking to you, and I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. Hallelujah. When you begin to serve the Lord, you will desire to get into the presence of God. For him, the tabernacle was the presence of God. And I will make my way to the house of God. He was the one who said, Ah, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go unto the house of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Oh, come on, come on now. The wings, another, another not so strong of covering, but it got the job done for the birdie that was underneath it. And we are those... Chickens, chicks, little ones in the sight of God. We are the ones he would gather. Jesus even said, I would have gathered you as a hen her brood. And so David penned these in his quest of worshiping God. Hallelujah. Anybody want to trust the Lord today? Hallelujah, and say, oh, I love you so much, Father, that I will trust in the covert of your wings, in the covering of your wings. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. I know that the enemy comes against me, winds may blow, the rains may come, the floods may flood, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. Look, look at Psalm, uh, pardon me, Proverbs 18.10. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and is safe. Running, trying to get in from the hailstorm that was coming, trying to get into the protection from the arrows that might have been being shot at you. Running for a strong tower, knowing that it was part of the body of your family and your friends. Strong tower where somebody was on the top watching over you. The name of the Lord is that strong tower. The name of the Lord is that strong tower. Anybody believe that today? Thank you, Lord. And the righteous run into it for safety. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 118, I'm sorry, 18, 1 through 3. I... Love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, and whom I will trust. He may be all these things, but do you trust him? He may be a healer, but do you trust him? He may be a deliverer, but do you trust him? He may be a supplier, but do you trust him? And the psalmist again, the psalm of David again, he says, huh, he's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, he's my strength, ha, huh, and I will trust him. It's a proclamation. Anybody here to declare that you will put your trust in him? My buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. 
so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And they ended up being in conflict, and Cain killed Abel. And Abel had brought a proper sacrifice, and Cain had not. God had a conversation with Cain, and he said, Cain, if you just bring the proper sacrifice, would you not be accepted? And he said, if you don't, sin crouches at the door, ready, ready to pounce upon you. Ready to come at you and devour you. He said, don't let sin devour you. But Cain could not, Cain could not get through the pride. Cain could not get through the hardness of his heart. Whatever it was that kept Cain from doing it, he just could not. So God brought another from Adam and Eve, and his name was Seth. And Seth was righteous, and Seth served the Lord. And Seth had a son, his name was Enos. And the scripture says, from that day, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. I don't know what happened in Enos' life. I don't know if that was just a generic term saying, hey, Seth came along and he was righteous and he had a son. And just in this period of time, this is when men began to call upon the name of the Lord. But generations are always affected by those who worship God and by those who do not. And as we celebrate grandparents today, there's nothing more powerful that you can give in generational transfer than the word of God. Nothing more powerful, not just a token Bible that you pick up at, at, at uh, Pyramidly Porch, but a, see that? But a, but a Bible or, or the transfer of knowledge or the transfer of testimony. I believe God. I love God. I it, more than just living it, you know, we always hear the greatest testimony is those that live it. I agree with that. But those who are living it silently and never proclaiming anything is not helping them. Because there's voices all over the place now who are loud in their ears, screaming at your kids and their false doctrines and their darkness and their weak, inept messages that we know, we know from experience, give it just a generation, give it, give it 20, give it 30, give it 40 years, and we'll look back shaking our heads, and if you don't believe it, look back in your closet and see if you find any bell bottoms. The hippie generation was, uh, was pretty big in the San Francisco era, but the property level, the properties went up. So they moved out of that area, went down south of there a little bit, and uh, in a kind of like a rural, rural area. But it was nothing new for them to get kids at the school with some pretty odd names, you know, like Sunshine and... And uh, what'd you say? Oh, yeah, uh, Sunny Promise or something like that. <laughs> it was kind of like the hippies were just sharing these names and stuff. So um, they they had uh, had a new group of kids come in, and and uh, the the kid comes up, and his name is Fruit Stand, and they thought, "Wow, that's weird." <laughs> Wow. And so Fruit Stand, they, they assigned him a seat, and they asked him, Fruit Stand, would you like some milk with your lunch? And he never responded. He never, he just went through the day. 
thought this kid is different. Well, the end of the day came, and uh, so they said, hey, uh, fruit stand, where, where are you supposed to go? And uh, he doesn't respond. And they thought, he hasn't responded all day long. And so they, they said, then they, they thought, he's not responded at, at all. So they walk over and they grab his name tag. And on the name tag, on the back side of the name tag, is where he's supposed to be met for his mom and dad to pick him up. And on the back side of his is Anthony. I about cried when I read that. <laughs> Nehemiah nine five says, "Stand up." Well, this there's a there's a front part with a whole bunch of names, but this this is like the middle of it. Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever, and blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all. Blessing and praise. Anybody got a praise for the Lord today? Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 113 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the, name, the Lord's name is to be praised. And the Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. It kind of takes an odd turn, but we can't forget who's writing this. It's a, it's a man of a simple time. And he says, the, the Lord lifts the poor out of the dust. Think about it. It, there were poor who were in the dust. And he's saying, you got to remember this. God can't pick you up out of the dust. We can call it whatever we want to call it. We can call it poverty. We can call it uh, addiction. We can call it despair. We can call it anxiety. We can call it sickness. Whatever we want to call it, but in his day it was poor out of the dust and the needy out of the dunghill. That's kind of like saying pulling them out of the portalette. The dunghill was the waste area. That he may lift him up with princes, even the princes of his people. And I recognize that in my life. I did live right next door to the sewer plant. But that's not how I equate with it. I was lost in sin. I was... My heart was darkened by the blackness of lies and deceits, sin. We don't like to use the word now. We don't like to call anybody sinners. And we, we, we don't like, and granted, nobody likes to be labeled, right? But I can label myself, can't I? And that's exactly what he was saying. He wasn't 
really talking to everybody else. He was saying, I, I was that guy who was in a horrible pit. It was in that lowest of lows. And the Lord reached down and picked me up and put me on a solid rock. Anybody remember that psalm? He can pick up the needy out of the dunghill and put him with princes. Are we not all sons and daughters of God? Did the scripture not say that we would be kings and priests with him? And here we are today in his glory. Brought from the lowest of the lows, the most despair of situations, to the blessings that I walk in today, I can equate with that. I get it. Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. He's my strong tower. Name of the Lord is a strong tower, and they... The righteous shall run therein, he saith. Acts chapter 2, verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Aren't you glad that that, vo- that name of Jesus is so powerful? It's a delivering force in the hearts and desires and the in the mind of people who are in the despairs, that are in the discouragement, or even the person who is just seeking God. You may not be in any muck or mar, but you seek God. You're just, you just want to know God. There was a rich young ruler one time that came to Jesus and said, what, what do I need to do and inherit eternal life? And he said, he said, sell all that thou hast. Give it to the poor. And come and follow me. And basically, he was saying he knew the heart of the rich man. He knew the heart of the rich man. He said, you got to get rid of that which attaches you to this world. And he's saying to us, we have to surrender. We have to submit It's not about what you've got in your pocket or even in your accounts. It's all about what you have to give God. And he's looking for a sacrifice of your spirit, your mind. He's he's wanting you to surrender to be a servant of his. Not somebody he pushes around and treats bad. But when you serve him, the scripture says he serves you. Said, let the greatest among you be servants all. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. He had just given them a little Bible study and let them know that they had they had walked away from their Messiah. So it continues: that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ, Christ being Messiah. They were looking for Messiah. They talk about Messiah to this day. They still look for Messiah, though they missed him. But there were some there that said, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we Then Jesus said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. It's coming. There's a voice of prophecy in their ears saying, It's coming. There's 
this generation coming is, is going to be a, dis, a time of despair. And we know that, that uh, the emperor of Rome sent soldiers in to wipe out. And Nero came and he wiped out all of Jerusalem. Just a couple of chapters over in Acts 4.10, it says, Be it known unto you and to all the house of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is a man who was at the gate beautiful, was seeking alms, chapter 3. He's looking at them and he said, Alms? And Peter looked at him with John beside him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And the scripture says immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he rose up rejoicing. He said, this is that man. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. In other words, he's saying that stone that should have been the foundation of your experience has just been set aside. We don't like that stone. It's not pretty. It's not, it's not comely. It's not what we're looking for. We're going to set that aside. But the truth was, that stone has been set as the corner of the church, and it's, everything else is going to be built off that corner stone. And that cornerstone is Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us in Isaiah, he may not be something that you would look upon and go, I want to follow that guy. But be it known that he's the guy who took the stripes upon his back, who his flesh was torn who said not a word, he went before them as a sheep would a shear is dumb. He went there without voice to fight against them. I'm not this, I'm not done anything wrong. None of that came out of his mouth because he was going there for us. For each of us, he walked that walk and carried that cross and he bled that blood and he bled out in that and he screamed out it is finished for each of us and the sins that we bore that's why he didn't say anything was it because he was just so tough it was because he was guilted by our guilt he was shamed by our shame but he bore it for us but when they put him down, being the man that he was, both man and God, death had no hold on him. So the apostle Peter is saying to them, said he was the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved. We must be saved. In a world that's looking for a strong tower, in a world that we're looking for a safe haven, the writer of the Old Testament, King David, writing, he said, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm trying to... To illustrate to you that the name of the Lord is like, what is it? What is it? A strong tower. An illustration to you so you could see it. But let me tell you something today. I show you a tower. And upon the top of that tower is a British flag. The reason being 
is there is not in existence today one of those strong towers that he wrote of. There is not one strong tower within the boundaries of the Middle East still standing today. Those strong towers that those men would run to, they do not exist any longer. But there still is a holy, mighty name in which the righteous can still run into and be safe. There is some place for the soul to go. There is somewhere for you to find the salvation that you need. There is a place. Hallelujah. There is no other name that is mighty, dominant, and strong like the name of Jesus. Somebody say the name of Jesus. We stand with me today. Raise your hands unto the Almighty God. You've been looking for help. You've been looking for a place of refuge. You've been looking for a place to hide from the despair, discouragement, the trouble, the financial issue, the sickness, the, the, the depression, the weariness of it all. Maybe you tried the alcohol, the drugs. Maybe you tried the different types of religions. I had a brother who went to church after church after church after church. Looking for an answer. And he sat down at kind of a family gathering. And my Aunt Bertha was there. And my brother looked over at her. And they were talking. He was back from the military. He had repented of his sins. Really just knowing doctrines of repentance really in his life. He was standing in a, in a, in a uh, fountain. In San Diego, he was a Marine. He was standing in a fountain in San Diego with tears rolling down his face talking to God. He said, God, I repent, but I need a change. So he came back home after his, his span of, of deployment or whatever was over, and he comes home. And he's sitting there after he's gone to all these different churches looking for an answer, looking for a God. And my aunt said, you don't need to look any farther. Said, you just need to come to my church. And she took him to an apostolic Pentecostal church to a place where the Holy Ghost was moving. And he immediately was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was baptized in Jesus' name. And he said, that's what I've always been looking for. always been looking for hallelujah 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 Jesus the Lord's working right here and I implore you to step out of your pew today and make your way down to an altar and give your heart to God. It doesn't take fancy words. It just takes the desire to say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. You don't even have to say it out loud. You just got to recognize it. You got to walk up. You don't even have to walk up. Just got to say, God, be my strong tower. God, be my deliverer. God, be my peace, be my help, be my strength. God, I need you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. See, when Jesus died, the name came, the power. He, he gave it to us like a seal. It, 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 it's like a, a king's seal. Wherever you went, that seal would show. Yeah, I have the authority of the king. I, I'm going in his name. And yes, today I go in his name. And I fight the enemy, which is sin and darkness and, 
and despair and even Satan. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I speak to him and declare him to be removed. I say to mountains, be thou removed. You say, where mountain? A mountain move? Yeah. Maybe not a literal mountain, but was there a mountain in your life, brother? And you had to say, get that thing out of my life. You didn't tiptoe around it. You didn't do si do with it. You finally had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. You had to speak to those things with the authority of the name of Jesus. And that's why. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Filled with his glorious spirit. Hallelujah. And walk in newness of life. Be born again, as the scripture said. Born again. And today ought to be your day. Today ought to be your day. Hallelujah. Can you raise your hand with me and pray? Father, I come before you and I pray for each person here today that if a heart is not right with you today, that they would surrender, Lord, and would pray with me, Lord, as a, a, repair, a prayer to repent, a prayer, God, to say, oh, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner and I need help. And look to you, O oh God, for the rest of it. For he can call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I believe, Father, that the beginning is to call out to you and to follow and obey the Acts 238 plan. Hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus, may it be so. May it be so. May there be help. May there be hope. May there be strength. Each person in this world. going to sing this. I invite everybody to come in for praise and worship. Come in and magnify the Lord. If you'd like to be anointed, if you'd like to be prayed for, if you'd like to be prayed with, oh, please let us know. We want to help you. Hallelujah. We're not going to attack you. We're going to encourage you. But only if you ask. In the name of Jesus. There's just something about the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the name of Jesus brings healing. Somebody praise him here today. Somebody the name praise of him here Jesus today. brings freedom. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
risen from the grave. Your Your name name is Jesus, Lord over all. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. John, you ready? You good? Thank the Lord.
other name, no other name I know, no other name, no other name I know, no other name, no other name I know. I've been privileged to give Sean uh, five different Bible studies, if I've got my count right, and uh, in a in a series. And excited that uh, each time I've had these Bible studies, it always go to it goes to Jesus. It always goes to Jesus. And Sean has received it. He's desired of it. He thanks me when I come. Thanks me when I leave. Sean's got a heart after God. I'm excited about what is going to happen in Sean's life. You've already looking at a miracle. What he's going to do is going to be miraculous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're trusting God for more and more of of just strength in him and victory and all the good things that God has for him. Praise the Lord. But he has professed the Lord as his Savior. He has uh, repented of his sins. And now we do bury the old man. If you would, just have a seat right there on that shelf. Sean, come forward as much as you can because you're a bigger fellow. We need to just be able to stretch you out in there. baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In Jesus down 
Because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am. Because the I am tells me who I am. Yeah. 